uh, happened this hour, and it was all about the new plan to respond to ISIS. And as he was shaking hands, put all the telephones, obviously many of the troop members wanting to be able to record this for posterity, um, they could not have been perhaps thinking about what else is going on at the same time as he makes this speech, and that is that ISIS is still out there with its message. In fact, just releasing a brand new video responding directly to President Obama's plan to, quote, destroy and disrupt this terror group. Take a look. This video effectively seems to dare American troops to come after ISIS members in Iraq. The title of the video is Flames of War, and it highlights the extremist group's ability to use modern media and weaponry for its propaganda and its recruitment. So far, ISIS has been very effective in using different mediums to recruit soldiers, and one of the biggest concerns is American citizens joining its ranks. Westerners waging jihad, fighting alongside ISIS and other terror groups is not a new phenomenon. Ever since 9-11, in fact, the FBI and the Justice Department have been trying to stay ahead of wannabe terrorists. But what draws these seemingly comfortable Americans to give up their comfortable life here and travel to war-torn countries to fight? Just what is it? In one recent case, the target was a Boston graduate student who's friends with a man now suspected of having ties to ISIS and its propaganda wing. In tapes obtained by CNN national correspondent Deborah Farrick, we hear the excitement and the hard sell. When it comes to jihad and recruitment, the conversation between two Americans, one in Boston, the other in Somalia, is as relevant today as it was eight years ago when it was initially recorded. Come with Ahmed, come with Daniel, come with everybody. Come now, go now. An American in Somalia aggressively trying to recruit Boston grad student Tarek Mahana in 2006, referring to him as brother or Effie in Arabic. I'm telling you, Effie, this is the life, man. There's no other life except for this. Is it it's good? I it's 100. It's, Effie, it's 100 percent. 100 percent, Effie. It's more than you even think it is. Dude, I just want to be somewhere where I can pray five times a day in a message. Effie, so. well, pray five times. Pray five times a day, Effie. Do you know where I am? You can't even smoke cigarettes. It's illegal. The hard sell is laced with religious words and ideas intended to reel in the potential recruit. What we're hearing so far, does this sound like the same kind of message that is being put out by recruiters today? This is exactly the same message that ISIS recruiters over social media, other forums are putting out today. You have to join, it's your religious duty. The friend turned recruiter makes clear everything will be arranged once Mahana lands. Check this out. Come here, you don't even have to ever have a dime in your pocket. I will set you up with everything. I'll have people to pick you up, a place for you to stay, and heck, if you want, I could have a wife waiting for you. That's what I want. That's what I'm there for. <laughs> the recruiter refocuses Mahana back on jihad, referring to fighting as making sandwiches. Yeah, but you know what the truth is? Once you see the brothers, you're not going to want to get married. You're going to want to, like, just make sandwiches all day and hang with us. <laughs> I feel, I feel. And getting there is easy, promises the recruiter. Travel first to Dubai, meet a handler, then buy a ticket to Somalia. Don't make your flight until you get to Dubai. Because once you, you get to Dubai... Then arrange it from there? Call. Yeah, we're going to also set you up with some people so you get you got somewhat of a visa. There's really no such thing as a visa. The eager recruiter is being coached by another American from Alabama named Omar. What was that, Omar? You're coming as a tourist, so bring tourist clothes and, and money to buy stuff. But don't bring anything huge, don't bring anything too small. You're a tourist. Federal officials say Omar Hamami is an al-Shabaab operative and key propagandist for the Somali terror group, killed in action in 2013. He said that you should make your intention now and know that you get your edge even if you were to die along the way. Mashallah. But I'm telling you, as he's <clears throat> talking about, like, if you can leave tomorrow, do it. Often the dreams turn to nightmares. The reality there is this brutal civil war where you have different Islamist factions killing each other. A lot of them become disillusioned. In the end, Tariq Mahana was convicted on terror charges. The recruiter returned to the United States and testified against Mahana at trial. And then officials say he allegedly turned his life around. Deborah Farrick, CNN, New York.
you heard that conversation and please make note there were no explicit invitations to come and bomb something or behead someone no just come hang with us this was just an appeal to the student to come and belong to something bigger than himself and ahead i'm going to talk to a man who says isis and other terror groups use the same kind of techniques that religious cult leaders do to recruit their fighters that's after this quick break publicized beheadings are so barbaric and so repulsive you might automatically assume the group has zero appeal among sophisticated Westerners, but you'd be wrong. The terror group has proven very effective in getting its message out and recruiting more than 30,000 followers. Of those, about half are foreigners from more than 80 different countries. About 2,000 of them are believed to be Westerners. So exactly what is the appeal to Westerners who are otherwise intelligent and educated? Listen to what Matthew Olson, the director of the National Counterterrorism Center, told a House Homeland Security hearing just a short time ago. Importantly, the group also views itself as the now leader of a global jihadist movement. It operates the most sophisticated propaganda machine of any terrorist uh, organization. It turns out timely, high-quality media, uh, and it uses social media to secure a, a widespread following. Instead of thinking of ISIS as merely an Islamic terror group, it may be more helpful to consider it a type of religious cult. Steve Hassan, the founder of Freedom of Mind, an organization dedicated to exposing destructive cults and cult behavior, joins me live now from Boston. I'd like to get your take on this because as I was listening to the conversation in Deborah Farrick's uh, package that just preceded this interview, it sounded as, as though the recruiter only talked about a brotherhood, a friendship, a uh, free lifestyle, don't even bring money. And then he even went so far as to say, don't worry about being upset about your parents. You can call them when you get here and just say sorry. And that sounds just like most cults out there. You know, Ashley, I've been helping people get out of cults since 1976 when my family rescued me out of a cult myself. And when I was listening to that tape, it reminded me of the exhortations of members of Jim Jones's a cult telling the members, come to Jonestown, it's a paradise, it's wonderful. And that, that keys in on one of the key principles of destructive cults, which is deceptive recruiting. People are not making informed choices, they're being lied to, information is being withheld, and they're systematically, incrementally uh, asked to change their behaviors, to, to hold information back from family and friends, and controlling behavior, information, thoughts, and emotions to create a new identity that's dependent and obedient on the authority figure. And as a licensed therapist, I've been helping people for decades around the world. And unfortunately, we need to come to terms with the reality that social psychology is a science now of how to take people, break them down, make them over in the image of the cult leader. Yeah. The good news is the human spirit wants to be free and people can get out and therefore former members are the best tool we have for inoculating the so, general public against types Steve, of cults like this. Let me ask you something. Our director of the program, Scotty, made a great um, observation when he was listening to this tape and it was that it sounded almost like this guy was selling timeshares or cruises. The demand for this this uh, effort to be now, come now, drop everything now, this real hard sell, that's usually, that's usually what gets your spidey senses tingling, and people usually draw back from that. But it seems to be working in this respect. So Why? I've, exactly. So I've written three books on the subject. People like Philip Zimbardo of Stanford taught a course at Stanford called The Psychology of Mind Control. Robert Cialdini wrote a book called Influence. They're using all of the techniques that we're teaching people in college courses on brainwashing and mind control and undue influence. They're applying it for what I think is a political cult. This is a, a political cult using religion and a perversion of Islam as, as the shield, but in fact, it's a systematic effort to uh, create an army of, of basically tranced out uh, followers. It's uh, absolutely fascinating, and I so appreciate your time. Steve Hassan, thank you. My pleasure. Uh, another story that we're following